you've met the idea of multiple secrets as early as year 10, uh, when you're doing your option and copies, that kind of thing, and you're like, oh, what happens when you have a, a, a graph? And you're like, okay, it's got a factor. What about what happens when it has a double factor? And what happens when it has a triple factor? That's a two, right? <coughs> so we looked at the geometry of that, and you're like, oh, okay, a single root, it just cuts straight through the axis. A double root, it sort of um, touches and then turns around, and then, um, sorry, did I say a triple? A double root, right? And then a triple, we know it's going to come up there, it's going to pause, and then it's going to stop. And then we did have the language last year of like station and points, points and function and so on. So we're going to take all those informal ideas and we're going to bind them in a nice formal definition. So we can say, right, you've got some value, alpha, and it's a root or a zero. I'm just going to pause there. Um, both of these words in our context are synonymous, okay? But sometimes you'll see one or the other. Basically, roots are calling over to a visual, like, oh, this is where it cuts the axis, okay? Whereas a zero is more algebraic, and like, you never need to worry about graphing these things. You can still find a value for which this equals zero. It has nothing to do with your picture, okay? You can have a root or zero of multiplicity n, just like this is multiplicity one, two, or three, and those examples are actually gonna be the, um, my avenue for stating a formal definition for this, right? The roots or zeros, they come from the factors, right? So you get a root or zero or multiplicity, and if the factor, now what factor goes along with the root? Z equals alpha, or X equals alpha. It's gonna be the actual factor, the factor will be something like this, or this, or this, or this, or this. Oh, That's a factor, right? So I could say, um, say Z minus alpha, that's the actual factor. If that factor occurs, n times. Okay, so this is a little bit, uh, we're trying to borrow the language of like prime factorization. And you've got a factor that comes up multiple times, it's still a factor, but it's a different kind of factor, right? It behaves differently. So in other words, you've got some polynomial, and you can write it as a product of that factor, n times, which we would write as z minus alpha to the power of n. And then you may have, you may or may not have some other stuff trailing along the end. And again, because I've used P, I'm also going to use standing for quotient, I'm going to call the other factor U of Z. Okay. All right. Now, when we first looked at this idea, we didn't know calculus. Okay. So we're going to take the calculus ideas and um, make sense of this, which we just looked at visually, just like we did with complex conjugate theory. Okay. Now, this is the case. What do we know about the derivative? It's just a product, isn't it? I mean, it's a product and there's chain rule in there. But it's not complicated. It's not complicated. If we call this u and we call it v, right? Let's just go ahead and differentiate, right? I'm going to write v times u dash. Okay, what's u dash in this context? A z minus x and u. Z minus alpha? Oh, that's what I meant. That's what I meant, right? Okay. They all look the same, okay? So there's my v, there's my u dash. Plus, <coughs> here's u. And v dash, well, I don't even know what q is, so I'm just going to call that q dash. Okay, now when you look at this, information should jump out at you that makes sense of this. Have a look at it carefully, right? If I just take a factor out, what factor can I remove? Yeah, I can take out n minus 1 of these factors that are giving me my multiplicity of roots, right? So if I take all of them out, um, or as many as I can, which is n minus 1 of them, what gets left in the brackets is, let's see, well, n lots of this guy. What gets left over on the left hand side? There'll be one lot of z minus alpha that I haven't removed. And then there will be q dash, whatever it happens to be. Okay. But the important thing to notice about this is that everything we've got jumbled up here in the um, in the brackets here is just it's just another function of z. Do you agree with that? Like everything is still in z. So this is z minus alpha to the n minus 1 times some new function of z. I'm just going to call it r because that's the next letter. So what we've just established is that, look at this first line. If p of z has a root, that alpha, of multiplicity n, that says something about the derivative and where it has roots, right? What, does, what can we conclude from this? Yeah. 
Z minus alpha is a root of gz. If if alpha if is a root, root of, of yes, Z, yep. And alpha is also a root of p. Then, uh, then alpha is also a root of p dash. Okay, almost very close. Watch out. Suppose suppose um, n were equal to one, right? So it's going to be a root there. But what's going to happen here if n were equal to one? It's going to vanish away, isn't it? It's going to happen here, right? It's going to disappear. When I differentiate this, I'm just going to get one, which which has no roots, right? But what I do know is very, very close to that, just a little nuance. If I have a root here of multiplicity n, then I will have the same root for multiplicity n minus 1. Okay? So what that means is, for example, have a look at this guy, right? This has a multiplicity, this has a root of multiplicity 2, right? That means that, I mean, let's just actually look at the example here. Y dash in this case is going to be 2x minus 2. So the root of multiplicity 2 here means the root of multiplicity 1 here, which of course accounts for the stationary point, stationary point that you get the root. And of course you can do the same thing here, right? That here, the triple root, it's going to mean that there is not only a stationary point there, because this is this, but it also means there's going to be a point of inflection because of, um, now I know that we know that this is not sufficient yet, you have to go and test it, but we actually know what's going to happen in this case, right? Because everything's continuous, it will be fine. Okay. So therefore, let's conclude this, right? If, if P of Z has Z equals alpha as a root of multiplicity N, then P dash will also have that everything, everything, everything. But the multiplicity will downgrade 1 every time you differentiate, right? When you go to the first derivative, the multiplicity will do n minus 1. And of course, if you differentiate again, if you can, double dash. Everything's going to be the same. You'll still have the same location of the root, but the multiplicity will downgrade again, it'll be n minus 2, and so on, okay? Not that you need to go very far, like the third derivative, if you're really interested in the third derivative, just differentiating for differentiating sake. So this is kind of where most of the action is happening, right? Yep. Will it happen for n times? Um, yes, it will. Okay. So you will keep on getting um, roots in the derivatives down to the nth derivative. Actually, it might be the n minus 1 derivative. I think it'll be n minus 1 derivative, because okay. if this is multiplicity n, then by the time you differentiate oh, n times, it's yeah. going to be 0, which is actually not a root. Yeah? Okay. okay, so how are we going to use this? Just like the complex conjugate root theorem, this is going to save us some time, and it's also going to make some problems which were impractical before, um, it will give us the tools to deal with them. So here's an example.